Judges, Judges, the fifth chapter in the 11th verse. If you have it, say amen. 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 That was two amens that I heard. Either you're distracted on your device or you're still looking for the book of Judges in the Old Testament before the book of Psalms. Amen. If you're a Sunshine Band student, we drilled you on this. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges. Amen. I helped somebody. You don't have to thank me. You could do it later. Amen. I know I helped somebody. It's all right. It's all right. Judges, the fifth chapter in the 11th verse. If you have it, say amen. amen. Elder Corey is reading in our hearing. They that are delivered from the noise. Notice, notice what the writer says. He says, they that are delivered from what? The noise. The noise. Everybody say the noise. The noise. There is so much noise. There is so much noise. But he says, they that are delivered from the noise of who? Of archers uh -huh. in the places of drawing water. Notice this. He says, in the place of those where they would go to draw water. He says, there is noise at the place of your refreshing. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. There is noise at the place of where I would go to feed you. There is noise in the place where I've destined to teach you, to talk with you, to commune with you. There's noise there. But, he, but the writer says, they that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water, what? There shall they rehearse the They're righteous. They're going to rehearse what? The righteous acts the of the Lord. The righteous acts toward who? Of the Lord. Of the Lord. Uh -huh. Even the righteous acts towards the inhabitants. Towards the inhabitants of who? Of his villages of his in Israel. Of his villages in Israel. What? Then shall the people of the Lord uh -huh. go down to the gates. Yes. Awake. Awake, so he Deborah. Says, awake. Awake. Get up, Deborah. Awake. Awake. And do what? Utter a song. Utter a song. Come up with a song. Make up a song, Mother Dunn. Arise, Barak. Uh huh. And lead thy captivity captive. And lead thy captivity captive. Uh huh. Thou son of Abinoam. Uh huh. Then he made him that remaineth have dominion. So he made those who remain. To have dominion over what? Over the nobles among the people. Over the nobles amongst the people. The Lord what? Made me have dominion uh -huh. over the mighty. The Lord's intent is to give you dominion in the earth realm over the mighty. But there is a principle. It's found in several verses of scripture all throughout scripture. One of them is in Psalms 150, Psalms 149, and where he has given us the praises to put in our mouth Amen. That will execute judgment. Amen. On our enemies. What God does is he gives us tools and weapons to win this war that we are in. The problem is we don't use the tools that he's given us. And praise, look at your neighbor and say, praise is a weapon. Praise is a weapon. Amen. Praise is a weapon. Prayer is a weapon. Amen. When you use those tools, you don't see what's going on, but you can be assured something is happening in the atmosphere. The preacher said on Friday night, he said, you can be a quiet worshiper. I had never heard it that way, but I agree with him wholeheartedly. He said, you can be a quiet worshiper, but you cannot be a quiet praiser. Amen. Because praise changes the atmosphere, which means that your voice must be heard in the atmosphere. I wonder if I can just hear your voice. Can you just shout out hallelujah right there? Hallelujah. 
when you do that, not only does it change the atmosphere, but it changes you. And so what God does is he tells us, I know that you're going through. I know you're experiencing pain and suffering, but I've given you something to change your circumstances. So from that verse, in particular, the 11th verse, I'll read the first part again for emphasis. It says, they that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. Amen. From that verse, I just want to speak to you about being delivered from the noise. Can you say that with me? I am, I am delivered, delivered from the noise. Come on, say it again. I am, I am delivered, delivered from the noise. There are 12 judges mentioned in the Bible when there was no king to rule Israel. During the time of the judges, the people would come to them for leadership. They would come to these judges for guidance. They would look to the judges for direction. You may be familiar with the names of three of them, although there are 12 of them. You are familiar with Deborah. We just read about Deborah. But you've also heard the name Gideon. And you've also heard the name Samson. Those are three of the 12. And this particular chapter in the one preceding it deals with Deborah or Deborah, who successfully causes Israel to become victorious over their enemies. You see, they had been oppressed. Amen. There's somebody in here. There's somebody online oppressed, depressed, and maybe even repressed. And in this particular chapter, they had been oppressed for 20 years under a Canaanite king named Jabin. But God promised through Deborah and Barak to deliver his people. As a matter of fact, if you just go a few verses above the fifth chapter, it says in the 23rd verse that God subdued on that day Jabin, the king of Canaan, before the children of Israel. And the hand of the children of Israel prospered, and it prevailed against Jabin, the king of Canaan, until they had destroyed Jabin, king of Canaan. What you must know is that every enemy to you is an enemy to God. Amen. And some things that God has left in our midst, some things that God has allowed is because we have disobeyed him. But God, when he put his people in the promised land, he wanted to them destroy every surrounding nation that was not like him. But because they wanted to be like their neighbor, amen, he allowed their neighbor to stay and he allowed them to conquer them in some instances. The things that you permit, the things that you allow in your life is the reason why some of us are going through some of the things that we're going through. I don't have a witness in the house, amen, but it's because you permitted that. It's because you allowed it. It's because you excused it that you are now experiencing the consequence that comes along with sin. Amen. But what God wants to do is he wants to deliver us, amen, from every enemy that we would come in contact with. And so what he does in or what he did in this particular chapter, the fourth and the fifth chapter, is he delivered the children of Israel through Deborah and Barak. And so what they did is in the fifth chapter, they wrote a song see you have to you have to sing something when nobody else the, the songwriter said I encouraged myself in the Lord you can't wait for praise and worship amen on Sundays in order to get your inspiration you have got to write a song yourself you don't have to be a songwriter you don't have to wait for a Grammy you just have to know that what God did for you nobody 
but him could do it. So in Judges, the fifth chapter, in the first verse, it says that after God had delivered them, then saying, Deborah, you've got to sing unto the Lord. You got to make his praises glorious. You got to let him know that you appreciate him. You got to let him know in that you know that it was nobody but him. And when you sing praises unto God, it, the scripture says that he inhabits. In other words, he lives there. He's looking for that place where his glory, where his presence, where his praises are being sung. And so Deborah and Barak, they sang a song on that day and it begins in the second verse praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel and they continue verse after verse after verse and so they get to the 11th verse and they say something particular they say something in this song that got my attention amen have you ever heard the words to a song and you said hmm, I never thought about that you always listen to the beat because that's what we are we're an emotional people we rock we still don't know the words to the song. Amen. Some of y'all still singing the songs and you're singing it wrong because you never knew the words. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. Where'd you get that from? They don't even say that. The word you're saying ain't even a word. Amen. But because we're emotional people, it's the beat that gets us. And we, we move and rock to it and we don't know. But you ought to look at some hymns. You ought to go back and just look at what the hymn says. Because the person was going through something when they wrote it in that particular manner. The person was experiencing hell and high water when they wrote it that way. And, but somebody came along and added a beat to it, an organ and drums. And that's all you moving by. And so when your time of temptation comes you don't have nothing to keep you because the beat is no longer there the music is no longer there but what God has given us is his word Oh, I, you need the word of God and so what we have in this song is the word from what Deborah and Barak had experienced and they said they that are delivered from the noise Amen. We're going to deal with that in just a moment. But I want to uh, make you aware of what Psalms 32 and 7 says. It says that thou art my hiding place. Yeah. See, even in a time of a pandemic, even in a time of an endemic, even in this time of COVID, God will make you a hiding place. God will protect you. You may not be able to go everywhere you want to go. You may not be able to do what you want to do, but he'll protect you. He'll keep you. He'll watch over you. So the psalmist says, he says, thou art my hiding place. I feel you, God, already in this place. He says, you shall preserve me from trouble. Amen. As our kids are going back to school, we need a hiding place for our children. Amen. We need a hiding place and for God to keep them from trouble. Just right there. Just say, God, cover our children right now in the name of Jesus keep them keep them from sin and disease even right now but it says something further there he says you shall compass me about wow. notice what he says uh -huh. he says you're going to surround me notice this he says with songs of deliverance he says that I'm going to give you a song of deliverance, something that will keep you during the middle of the week, something that will keep you when you're going through your toughest trial, something, and it comes from you. I'm going to surround you with a song of deliverance. But I would have you know that every song is not a song of deliverance. Every song, as a matter of fact, if you remember the song, I won't complain. Anybody, everybody remember that song? I won't complain. I will have you know that that song is full of complaints. Take your time, sir. You said I won't complain, but the first, second, and third verse ain't nothing but complaining. 
So we have to watch what we actually entertain ourselves with because the music that you actually uh, listen to, it has a way of bringing you down, bringing you up, taking you to the side. You need the words in the song. I've had some good days. No, I need something to deliver me. Yes. Yes. Amen. We were in a revival many, many years ago, and evangelist Deborah Thomas was running it at the time. And she said, Brother Don, I don't know what you're playing over there. Amen. But you better change songs. Amen. Because music has the ability to change the atmosphere. Amen. It can bring you in the presence of God, or it will make you feel like crying and tearing and getting a pillow and laying down, going in your room and shutting the curtains. Amen. So every song, everybody to say that every song is not a song of deliverance amen but in exodus the 15th chapter what is amazing is that when god had delivered his people amen across the red sea when they got to the other side what's amazing is that they immediately on the edge of the sea before they got any further miriam grabbed a tambourine and they began to sing a song of deliverance they began to exclaim and proclaim lord you threw the rider in the sea. They began to make known his deeds amongst the people. And a song of deliverance reminds God of who he is. It doesn't talk about how I feel. It doesn't talk about what I'm going through. But it says how great is our God. I will sing of you because you are great. So you have to find out uh, one of the reasons why we go through certain things is because of what we have entertained ourselves right. with. Uh, right. I haven't forgot the subject. I haven't got off track. I just am building a platform to go from. So I want you to understand that even David, a man, when he began to uh, gain rank and when he began to increase in stature, the people began to sing praises and they began to acknowledge how God was delivering Israel through the hands of David. You need a song of deliverance. You need to find a song of deliverance. I didn't know that vinyl records were back in. Amen. I didn't realize that you could buy a record player and play some of them old vinyls. Amen. But you know what? Some of us need to buy a record player and scrap some of this new music and pull some of those vinyls out. Amen. That from years ago that had meaningful lyrics and music in it. I know some of them may be scratched. Amen. But we need some. We need to hear something that's going to push us. That's going to encourage us. That's going to keep us. And so those that were victorious notice this. They were delivered. They were delivered from the noise in the places where they would draw water. This is what Deborah recognizes in this verse. The places, I'm moving here, the places where they drew water were typically a great distance from their dwelling place. And so it took a bit of time to get there. And so it always meant that they were somewhat uh, wearied or weak from getting to where they were. Oftentimes the cities were built on hilltops. So what they would have to do is they would have to go outside of the city to go to the well. Everybody say the well. Yeah. Amen. They had to go from where they were. I said this a few Sundays ago. Amen. That when God had established his presence outside the temple, they had to go outside the camp. Amen. To reach him where he was. If you remember in John the fourth chapter, amen, when Jesus said there is need for me to go through Samaria. He, was, he, he knew that he would meet a woman, amen, at Jacob's well. But what the scripture notes in the sixth verse, it says that Jacob's well was there and Jesus was wearied with his journey because he then would sit on the well at the sixth hour and he would ask the woman of Samaria to draw water. 
Jesus said unto her, give me something to drink. Why would you go to the well and not get something to, the, to drink? Why would you come to the well? Why would you come to church and never, ever be replenished? Why would you come when the praises are going forth and you sit on the pew like you have nothing to give God praise for? Why would you come to the well and not ask for something to drink. This is what Jesus did. He, from his natural body, was wearied from the journey. Some of you all in here are weary. I can look at you and tell you've had a rough week. And man, I can look at your eyes and see them have open above the mask on your mouth. I can tell you've had a week. Oh, I can tell some of y'all need to wake up like Deborah. That's why he said, awake, awake. Deborah, in utter a song. Some of y'all need to wake up in here because you know why? It's the noise that has gotten to you. It's the noise that is controlling you. It's the noise that is distracting you. But if you could come to the place where you are delivered from the noise, you will find that God has a refreshing for you like no other. You'll go out those doors a different place place from in a different way than when you came in on um, this particular week I was so tired we went nightly to the meeting faithfully each night and by the time it gave, came to Friday I was literally without any energy it took everything I needed something to push me to go and I, I, I said well maybe I shouldn't go tonight you ever been there amen come on y'all know what I'm talking about amen somebody said it today I don't know I mean I'll watch it online Amen. But if you've ever been just weary in your body, but I said, I'm going to press on. Amen. And the service on Friday night was so powerful. Amen. That, that, that when the preacher was preaching, it just illuminated me. It put something in me that I didn't have before I came. Now, had I stayed home, I wouldn't have got the blessing that I would have gotten by being there in person. When I drove on the way back, it felt like it was 15 minutes. Amen. Even though it was just uh, an hour's drive. God has a way of reviving his people. He has a way of refreshing his people if they could ever get beyond the noise. So you must know that we have a well that we can go to. But what you must also know is that well, where the well of water is, there is also an ambush. Come on, say that with me. Where the well of water is, there is an ambush. There is something seeking to rob you of your joy and peace. There is something seeking to distract you. Amen. People come to the well desiring refreshment and they leave disappointed. The wells were deep. This is the next point you must recognize. The wells were deep, so you needed something to draw the water with. That meant that even though you would be weary after arriving to the well, it would take some more effort at the well for the well to produce water. It wasn't just going to come. And this is how we come to church. Amen. We come as if it's just going to fall on us. No, you have to clap your hands. You have to open your mouth. You have to put something in to get something out. If you want to draw water from the well, you need to go deep. Everybody say go deep. Yeah. And so what we recognize in the scripture, what we recognize from this verse is that the very place where you would go to get water, there was something there to take you away from it. Go with me very briefly to Exodus, the second chapter in the 16th verse. Exodus, the second chapter in the 16th verse. Exodus, the second chapter in the 16th verse. What does it say, Elder Cor? 
story? Now the priest of Midian uh -huh. had seven daughters. So the priest of Midian had seven daughters and what? And they came and drew water. Notice, so they came to a well to draw water and they did what? And filled the troughs to water their father's flock. So they flock. filled the troughs to water their father's flock. But what happened? And the shepherds came and but drove them this. away. When they came to the well, when they came to the place where God had destined uh, uh, nourishment, refreshing for them, when they came to that place, that, that term shepherds is actually interpreted robbers. And the shepherds or robbers came and drove them away. When you finally get to church, when after you have been through what you've gone through, when you are sitting in those pews, make no mistake about it. Some of y'all are half asleep now because the enemy don't want you to get the word in your heart. So what this scripture says is when the priest of Midian when, when the daughters came to the well to fill their troughs amen with water the robbers came and what? Drove them away. Drove them away. That's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to drive the word out of your heart. It's in Matthew 13. I encourage you to read it sometime because if it's only what remains in your heart. Amen. That's going to bless you. Anything that don't remain is just by the wayside. It's on stony ground. It's over here. But if you don't have something that remains in your heart, amen, you're going to go out dry as when you came in. And it's the noise uh, that's going to keep you keep you depressed. It's the noise that's going to keep you oppressed. It's, it's the noise that's going to keep you worrying about your situation. It's the noise that's going to keep you lacking faith in your life. But it says, but Moses. See, I, I represent a leader in this particular capacity. But Moses did what? Stood up Moses and Moses stood them. up. See, the leader has to stand up just like Deborah did in her time. Just like Deborah did because they were oppressed. Moses had to stand up when they came to the well of water and he what? Helped them. And he helped them. And watered their flock. And he watered their flock. That's what a shepherd does. A shepherd keeps the wolves away. A shepherd keeps uh, all distractions. The shepherd has to bring order and discipline sometime in the house because everybody is somewhere else than where they should be. So when they came to get water and the robbers drew them away, Moses stood up and helped them. And what God is trying to do in today's time is he's trying to help us. That's why the scripture says he sent his word. No, he didn't send a stimulus check. He didn't send a, a, a health bill. No, he didn't send a raise on the job, a new house. He sent his word. Amen. And a lot of what we need, we ignore the word looking for something else. But everything else that you need is found in the word. So what we must know is that you've got to get delivered. You've got to get sometimes in the seat or the pew you're on. Sometimes you've got to move. Amen. Sometimes it's, it's where you're positioned, where you can get the deliverance that you need. Sometimes in your prayer and devotion life, you got to change times. Because where you are now, you have so many distractions that won't allow you to get the well of living water that God has for you and you have not yet been delivered from the noise in your life sometimes you have to say no I got to move from here amen because this is bringing me down you have to recognize from whence you have fallen that's what it says in revelations he says to, I'm going to remove the candlestick out from its place you're not going to have no light no direction you're not going to have the illumination of God that he would desire for you you're not going to have the refreshing that he has also so often provided for us because of the noise it's the noise it's the noise so, so you have to find out uh, what can I do differently Proverbs 4 and 23 says keep your heart 
And it says do it with all diligence. It means that you have to put forth a special effort. Amen. That when I go before God, when I come to hear his word, amen, I don't want to mix this with anything else. I hear you ever heard something, but there was also background noise. Amen. We learned this in the pandemic. Amen. Turn your phone off. Put it on mute. Everybody, 45, 50, 75 people on the call, but we can't hear why because of background noise. Amen. And some of our lives, there are, there is so much noise. There's so much noise that's distracting. That's bringing us from the place that God would desire for us to be. And so what God wants us to know, he wants us to be prepared because we're not ignorant of the enemy's devices. Amen. You got to know that everybody in the church ain't saved. You got to know that everybody that comes to church isn't coming for the same reason you're coming. You have to know that if you want to praise God, you can't wait on your neighbor. Amen. Everybody waiting. Are they going to stand? Are they going to jump? Are they going to do this you'd be surprised when an altar call has come amen this ain't just children doing it adults do it too i'm gonna see who goes first everybody come then you feel okay but what can you do on your own what can you find yourself doing lord i just want to be saved god i just want to be delivered i don't want to go through what i'm going through anymore i know if i come to church you have got something waiting for me so that i can be delivered from what I'm going through. Amen. You'd be surprised how many people miss out on the healing. Amen. You'd be surprised at how many people miss out on what God really had for them because of the noise. So in Genesis, the 49th chapter. Amen. Genesis, the 49th chapter in the 22nd verse. I want you to get that. And while you're getting that, I'm going to finish Proverbs 4 and 23. He said, keep thy heart with all diligence. He says, for out of it are the issues of life. In other words, when you protect your heart, you protect your heart by protecting your gate. Your gate is your ear gate, your eye gate, your mouth gate. You make sure that what comes in your temple is only pure and holy. When you do that with all diligence, some conversations you have to put to an end because what you hear is nothing but noise. Some things that you see on the television, it ain't nothing but but noise. Some things that you will put in your mouth ain't nothing but noise. So you've got to get delivered, everybody say, from the noise. When you do that, you're going to see a difference in how you act. You're going to see a difference in how you speak, how you talk. You're going to see a change in your life because you've been delivered. Amen. Ask your neighbor, are you delivered from the noise? So Genesis, the 49th chapter and the 22nd verse, a declaration is being given to all the sons of Israel and he gets to Joseph. Notice, notice what he says. This is very important to keep in mind. He says, Joseph is what? A fruitful bow. Joseph is a fruitful bow or bow and even what? A fruitful bow notice, by a well. Notice this. He says, Joseph, your life is a fruitful bow or bow. Notice this, by a well. This is why in Psalms 23, it says that he leadeth me beside still waters. See, some things that God is trying to get rid of out of your life, you're saying, Lord, don't cut that off. But some of the still waters that you need in your life is going to be when your health is restored. It's going to be when your finances come back. Is when you have peace in your home because you've gotten rid of all of the noise. The still waters. Notice, he didn't say raging waters. He said he's going to lead you beside what? The still waters. So this declaration and decree that's given to Joseph, he said that in your lifetime, this is like a prophecy to all of the sons. And he says something to this one. And then he says something to that one. And when he gets to Joseph, he says, you're going to be a fruitful bow. And you're going to be a fruitful bow by a well. 
But notice what he says next. He says, your branches are going to even run over the wall. You're going to be so fruitful that your life is going to extend to others. Amen. You're going to be a blessing. You're going to increase. God is going to make you where you are going to be above and not beneath. You're going to be a, the head and not the tail. But he says what? He says, the archers. Is that what your Bible says if you're there? He says, the archers, read. Have sorely grieved him. But somebody is standing there with an arrow. An archer is standing there to grieve you. They're waiting for you. Listen, by your well. By your place of, of refreshment. By the, by the place of, of, of where you would get. See, this is where they tried to figure Samson out. Samson was strong for years. Mm -hmm. Samson had defeated many things, but they were trying to figure out his secret. Your secret is the well that God has put in your, in your place. You have to know where your well is. Where your well is is, is is God's mysterious way of putting in you revelation. Where your well is, God has provided a way of giving you strategies to, to escape the plans of the enemy. You have got to get to your well. You have to find out where is my well. But you have to also know that at your well, there is someone looking to strike you down. So he says the archers have what? Sorely grieved him. They have sorely grieved. They, he said he, he warns Joseph. He lets him know that wherever your well is. Amen. Because you're anointed and appointed. There's a devil on your level that's going to try you on every end. So he says the archers have sorely grieved him. And they've done what? And shot at him. And shot at him. And hated him. And hated him. I don't care how much you do for some people. They ain't going to like you because you are you. Yeah. It ain't got nothing. You, you, you can buy them a house and they still hate you. That's right. That's right. You can bend over backwards. It ain't got. It's just because God has anointed you. God has blessed you. And the archers are standing waiting at your well. And so you have to get to the place where when you know that I'm at my well, you have to know that God has put a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have to know that when you get to where you're going, a man, there's always going to be someone there to shoot you down. There's always going to be someone there that hates on you. There's always going to be someone there that questions, well, did God really say that? That's why you can't tell everybody everything. And sometimes you can't tell anybody anything. Because you got it at your well. And at your well, you heard the voice of God beyond the noise. You heard him in the midnight hour. You heard him when he told you, I want you to do this, this, and this. And I want you to do it at this particular time, at this particular place. And when you do that, you're going to see a miracle happen. Didn't you hear the testimony from Sister Nichelle? She was unconscious. And had she fell this way, that's how precise the victory and deliverance of God is. If she fell this way, we would have been having a funeral. But she fell this way. So, so at your well, at your place of, of deliverance, the enemy don't want you to get what God has for you. This is why Daniel, he was struggling within himself. He was really trying to figure out. He said, Lord, I prayed and I fasted. What, what Daniel did not recognize in, in Daniel, the 10th chapter and the 12th verse, what he did not know is that when the angel come, came unto him, he said, fear not, Daniel. He said, for the first day that you set your heart to understand. See, from the first day when you, you came to church, when you were trying to figure out what this belief is, what, what, what is believing in God all about? From the first day that you set out to turn your heart and your mind towards believing God, the enemies start fighting you right then. 
This is why some people can't survive. Because it seemed like things were going better for them in the world. When you start coming to church, then all hell broke loose. Why? Because the prince of the power of the air, he just wants to keep you in the noise. He just wants to, to keep drawing you back in the noise. So, so, so when a person comes to church, they're, 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 and this ain't no reflection for nobody sitting on the back pews, but, but what he'll do is they'll, they'll hear something that, yeah, that, that was pretty good. But when they get out the door, the enemy steals the word out of their heart. So what happens is the noise is louder than the word within them. So they don't have nothing to keep them. That's why when you come to church, amen, when I'm not in the pulpit, amen, when I'm not on the uh, instruments, I got to come to the first or second row. No, because I don't want to see your device. I don't want to see your popcorn. I don't want to see the gum. I don't want to see that burrito in your, um, your lunch bag. Uh, amen. I know you got it. <laughs> because it's too much noise. I need to hear God attentively. I need to hear him without anybody, amen, doing anything that will take my attention away from the word because I don't know what's coming up. This is my well. When I go before God in prayer, that's my well. That's where I hear from him. That's where I get my strategy. That's where he reveals himself. That's where he tells me what's next before it even happens. If I don't have that to go by, then I'm just going to respond to the noise. So you just do what the noise is doing. Whatever the noise is doing. But you got to do just what this graphic says. You got you to start doing this. You got to get delivered. So, so Daniel was, he was, he was really distraught. And so the angel had to let him know, I heard you from the first day that you would even chasten yourself before God. And some of us have given up, amen, right before, I believe it was Sister Johnson that said it during Sunday school, you just keep chipping away, amen. And you are right, right before you just need one more good strike and you're going to hit oil. You're going to strike gold. But because the noise, it has drawn you back. And because you were, you, were, you were closer than you ever thought to receiving what God had for you before its manifestation. And if you would have hit that one more time. And so the enemy just wants to keep us in the noise. You got to let the gossip go. Amen. Sometimes you got to let a Facebook go and put your face in his book. Come on. You got to get the word of God in your heart. Why would you come to church week after week and still be going through the same thing? Something is wrong. And I'm here to tell you as a pastor, if that's happening, you have to get delivered. You may have to fast. You may have to do something different because the songwriter says something has to break. No, I'm just going through the routine and nothing ain't happening. When we went on that fast in June, all hell broke loose. All hell broke loose in the Dunn household. That's how the enemy works. That's how you know you're on the right path. Because we were getting closer to his voice and further away from the noise. And I, I, I texted my family on this week. I said, you know what? In a very strange way, I said, everything that fell apart is coming together. Because what broke, God had a way through the fast of making, turning it around for our good. But if you don't get outside of the noise, you're going to find yourself getting deeper and deeper in what you're going through. 
So, so, so when God tells Daniel, he lets him know, he says, listen, your words were heard. And he said, I have come for your words. But notice this. He says, I've come for your words, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me. He said, one in 20 days, 21 days, Daniel was wondering. See, all the noise is going on. He's not hearing. But this is what I want you to understand. You got to keep pursuing God. God, I need to hear from you. And I need to know it's you and no one else. I need you to deliver me from this noise. I need to get outside of the noise so I can hear your voice again in my life, in my circumstances, in my family, in my health. And when you do that, Lord, I know we'll have the victory. So he said, he said that there is a warfare going on for 21 days. And what the enemy wants to do is he wants to get you to stop praying. He wants to get you to stop reading the word of God. He wants you to stop seeking God because you haven't heard from him. And when you do that, you will end up in defeat and back in the noise just because. That's why the scripture says, cast not away, therefore, thy confidence, which have great recompense of reward. But you have need of patience. That after that, after you have done the will of God, he said you might. You might. You might receive the promise. See, it requires all of you. That's why we talked about the other week. You can't be half baked. God needs your whole heart. You can't just be, well, I'm going to do this and then you, you, then you come back. And you go in and then you come back. I'm letting you know you're not going to get what you need from God doing so. I'm about to close. But, but, but I, I want you to understand what God told Daniel. What he told him after he let him know that there was a warfare going on. He says, now I am come to make you understand what's going to befall Thy people in the latter days. See, Daniel waited enough where he could hear the voice of God beyond the noise. The noise is saying one thing this week. It's saying another thing next week. The next week is saying something. You don't know what the noise is going to say next. But what God says is for sure. His word is for certain. It's not going to change. So he let Daniel know because you were able to hear me. Because you were able to receive from me. I'm going to let you know. I'm going to give you a vision. I'm going to give you dreams. I'm going to allow you. I talked about this last week. See, Saul gave up too soon. He didn't hear from God by dreams, by Urim, or by a prophet. So he starts seeking other areas of revelation. Well, what do you think, Sister Michelle? You think I should do this? Well, what do you think, Sister Kimberly? You think think I should go over there? Sister Lisa, do you agree with Sister Kimberly? Kimberly, do you agree with? See, now you all confused. You ain't heard from God yet. And what God wants his people to do is he wants them to be delivered from the noise so that they will know, like Daniel, what's going to befall us in these latter days. He says, for the vision is yet for many days. So uh, let, let, let me move on, and I'm going to bring this to a close. So, so you have to understand the noisemakers. You have to understand the noisemakers. Number one, there's noise within yourself. There's noise within your own soul. There are things that you have gone through that you haven't been healed from that is still causing noise in your heart. And so while you're trying to move forward, the noise of the past is distracting you. And what God is saying, I need you to spend enough time in my presence so that I can heal you. So I can deliver you. So I can bless you so you can move forward. But it's the noise. So within our own self, there is noise. Within the world that we live in, there is noise. And there is noise in the spiritual world. 
Ephesians, the second chapter and the second verse, and I'm closing. He says, in times past, you walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now work in the children of disobedience. So you fulfilled the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And were by nature the children of wrath. Because that's all you knew. Was the noise. But what is the answer? If we go back to the original verse in Judges, the fifth chapter and the 11th verse, he says, they that are delivered from the noise of archers in the place of where they draw water. Notice what he says. He says, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. So this is how you can change your situation. See, you have to begin rehearsing. The righteous acts of the Lord. If you want to change your course of direction, start rehearsing the righteous acts of the Lord. The more negative news you hear, start rehearsing the righteous acts. I guarantee you're going to end up by yourself because misery loves company. Somebody wants you to agree with them. Uh, it's so, you know what, but I'm having a beautiful day. You know what? They ain't going to talk to you much longer. Oh, how do you feel? I feel great. They looking for somebody else to agree. Oh. You know what? Because you got rid of the noise. You have to learn how to rehearse the things of God. That's what he's saying. He said, those who have been delivered from the noise have started rehearsing. Thank you. When you rehearse something when we when in the music department, the praise team, the choir, anybody else, you know what? When we when we rehearse something, we go over it over and over. Now let's do that part again. That's what rehearsal is all about. You you do it until it becomes a part of you. When you rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, amen, when you would want to say something bad, amen, you say, bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be. When your body ain't feeling well, you say, I'm healed by his stripes. Amen. The Lord suffered for me, and therefore I have the victory. When you would want to agree with your environment, you would say, I am the salt of the earth. I'm the light of the world, and God has brought me out. He has made me the head and not the... When you begin to rehearse the right righteous acts of the Lord, your environment is going to change. Yes. And you're going to discover you've been delivered. You're going to discover that your, everything about you is different. Things are going to change for you. Everybody stand. Everybody stand.